So welcome everyone. My name is Christian Galletta, working for Federen and here uh, representing uh, Green Highland, uh, the project through which we are uh, having this workshop today. So I would like to welcome you uh, and start this workshop with a warm applause for all participants and speakers that actually managed to, to come here today. So I would like to <laughs> the vibes here because it's good. You managed to come to a remote and yet very beautiful island like Vliland. And I'm sure that you will get the most As you know, out of all this. the rain was when, when you were on the boat. We arranged that also. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was part of it, exactly. Uh, so, I will just quickly go through the agenda. We are 10 minutes late, but I'm sure it will work anyway. Uh, so, welcome also participants online. Thanks for joining and for waiting us uh, 15 minutes more. So, we will start with a round of uh, introductory presentations. We will have first uh, Albert Reuter from uh, presenting uh, the province of Friesland, which is co-organizing this workshop. Then we will have some sit sit setters from the European Commission. Specifically, we will have uh, Mr. Matthias Sede from the Mission Innovation Platform and director of the Mission Innovation Platform, and also uh, Mr. Uh, Pietro Calabrisco, project officer from the Clean Hydrogen Partnership. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't come here today, but they are online, they are ready to present to you everything and also to answer your questions. Uh, afterwards, we will have uh, Tatiana, Tatiana Block from NRC, who is also partner of the Green Island Project and will present it for you. After this uh, round of presentations, there will be the Q&A. So, participants, you will have the, the possibility to ask as many questions as possible. Uh, think of them already when people are presenting, and this applies also for the second round of, of Q&A, after the second round of presentations. So we will then, indeed, after uh, we finish with the first round, have the presentations of actually three hydrogen ballets projects. We will have the Heaven project from uh, with uh, the New Energy Coalition and Gerte presenting. Uh, we will then have uh, from uh, online another uh, speaker, Elina Maki, presenting the Baltic Sea Hydrogen Project. And finally, we will finish with the Asturias Hydrogen Valley with Indalesio from uh, the uh, Fondazione Asturian dell'Energia, alias Fine. <laughs> uh, after this, another round of Q&A, and then there will be the second part of the workshop, more practical, in person, only for on-site participants. And then, for this, I will explain to you later on, during lunchtime, after lunchtime, how it will uh, work. So, uh, before starting, uh, very quickly, etiquette. As you know, we are, it's a closed environment, so please uh, make sure that the audience uh, don't, do not speak, because otherwise everything will be, uh, the microphone is over there, so for uh, you not to be uh, heard by everyone. Uh, and also for speakers to speak as loud as possible. The audio is good, but just to make sure that uh, everyone can hear you from here and also online. Uh, for participants online, please make sure that when you are connected, you are unmuted and your video is also not uh, uh, not on. Or, I mean, you can also connect, but we will not see it. So yeah, but please for the for the audio. And finally, for the questions. So on-site participants, just raise your hands when it's the time. The time of the Q and A will will uh, will be there, and uh, we will have the round of presentation uh, of uh, questions. And in case there will be no more questions and still more time, we'll also give participants online the possibility to ask questions. And Melissa will select some questions from you. So in case, also write them in the chat. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, enjoy the workshop. And then I will actually uh, give um, Albert the, the word, the floor. So please. OK, thank you. Welcome in the Netherlands. As you can see, we are in a beautiful country in the north of, uh, of an, our province. is in the north of uh, the Netherlands. And uh, we are now in the... Sorry to interrupt. We have like a, a problem with the audio. The people from uh, cannot hear us uh, well. No, no, it's okay. We can hear you. No, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The beauty of the hybrid event. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Good oh, work. no problem. Uh, this is our province, and uh, well, welcome on one of the most beautiful islands in the Netherlands. One of the four beautiful islands in the 
you see them all the four beautiful islands and I will be honest um, I'm freezing and all the islands are also freezing so when you're in the northern part of North Holland maybe they have different uh, opinion but this is my uh, personal uh, opinion um, I want you to tell something about projects we do and uh, all we want to do in the near uh, future um, for instance Nessie and you all know Nessie because Nessie is an animal in, uh, in uh, Scotland um, why uh, we wanted to make Nessie uh, the new energy coalition is here the leading partner uh, of uh, the, we, we have lack on uh, stuff to do the uh, energy transition you can read here why we uh, want to do it what we want to do it and uh, well it's not approved yet uh, it should be approved last call but then uh, we uh, was asked to add a um, friend's partner in it we found one and uh, I think it will be approved in the coming call this uh, at the end of this month or the next uh, month yeah um, well this is I, I don't want to read uh, what's what's on the paper you, you can uh, read it you can can get the presentation uh, f um, it's very important that uh, it will be done and uh, you see uh, a lot of partners are involved it's a project we made in Intrek uh, Nordsee region and um, yeah next one please um, the next one is Freya it's the first uh, governmental project also in the Intrek Nordsee um, region um, it is running at this uh, moment um, what do we do in this project uh, how we want to uh, have a research it's the University of Groningen who is doing it uh, how can visitors of the islands become fans I will tell something more about that what can we do with waste on the islands you all know that there is a lot of waste what you can find on the beach students from Norway and students from Sweden the Netherlands and France are doing research what can they do how can they make souvenirs about it because now the mostly souvenirs are made in uh, China and we want to get rid of made in China we want to get the information made on Schimmelikov made on Vlieland on it and uh, what roles uh, can uh, we have in um, innovation how can visitors become fans uh, when you go to this uh, website um, you see a lot of uh, information and I would um, ask you well to register yourself and that you can add uh, what uh, uh, place you like and that kind of things and you help the University of Groningen uh, with that and if needed and the place it's not only islands but also on the mainland can uh, ask some questions but that's not uh, always uh, done um, the roles uh, of the governmental you see here 11 we found already 11 roles um, but we missed one and that are the 38 ID killers but uh, we will work on that uh, also um, well, it's, it's coming from uh, an, an other project called uh, uh, Islands of Innovation we are making now a an, an kind of rudder uh, how can the government help uh, entrepreneurs to do in innovation and not uh, to, to say normally in our office in the past when you came with a very good idea, ah, oh, doesn't fit. Ah, oh, no, no. Now we want to help uh, uh, the businesses and come together with a uh, higher uh, plan. Um, yeah. Next one. Oh, you see that you saw SDGs. I want to tell something about the SDGs. Yeah. Uh, we made and together also with the University of Groningen and the Ontwikkelfabriek in Groningen we made a web-based app it's financed by the Interact Europe uh, program um, 
It's made in the project Delta Lady. What does it do? Very simple. It explains the SDGs. And believe me, uh, a lot of people don't know about SDGs because when I tell some people in our office, uh, I, last week I got the remark, ah, I don't need the SDGs. I know them all three. <laughs> OK, uh, so there is only 40. But uh, you can go to this um, uh, web-based app. You can fill in some questions, and you get a report. How sustainable is your project, and on what uh, uh, SDGs you can work uh, on it? And uh, yeah, OK. Um, this is what I got from uh, from uh, Hamburg Set, a clean energy for EU uh, island facility of the European Commission. Um, there is a call, and uh, as you see, Ameland, Schimmel, Koch, Bonaire, Saba, and Sint is Pistachies are also in. And um, well. Um, yeah, the Dutch coordinator is uh, Prof B, the network. It's a uh, professor from the TU Delft and, TU and the University of uh, Aalborg. And, uh, well, it will be uh, soon decided. Then, uh, Digital Islands, that's another ID we have. We have made a proposal and we expect a decision of Interact Europe uh, soon. Uh, next month, maybe early December. Um, <coughs> all modern islands will join this uh, project, including Tessel. And why? Because there is a water deal made in the Netherlands, and uh, together uh, well, they are partner in the project. Subject is about health, education, housing. Well, I think uh, when you're coming from an island, these are the subjects you remember well. That's also a probably a problem but, um, in our island. Um, so again, welcome on Vlieland, one of the four Frisian Wadden Islands. Well, they may be small, but large in their ambitions and their activities. And that's uh, what I wanted to say. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Albert, for uh, uh, presenting Friesland province, for organizing this workshop, and for actually sticking perfectly on time with the presentations. <laughs> That's great. Uh, one thing that I actually forget forgot about telling is that uh, I will also, in case in order to stick with the time, uh, sometimes if uh, the time is running out, I will uh, kindly remind the uh, speakers to, to wrap up, so that we can also give the floor to everyone and stick to to our 10 minutes uh, delay. Uh, after this, I would welcome uh, Mr. Matthias Sede, director of the Mission Innovation Platform. I hope I uh, spelled the name correctly. Uh, some uh, background from his side, he has a PhD in uh, chemical engineering. Uh, before joining as director uh, for the Mission Innovation Platform, he worked for the Ministry of Economic Affairs for the Netherlands. And now he is presenting what uh, the Mission Innovation Platform is actually doing to help uh, uh, project developers and all the activities related to Hydrogen Valley. So, warm applause for him. Yes, thank you. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning, uh, being in uh, Friesland. Uh, I think that's uh, it's very nice. And, I mean, uh, Thanks for inviting, and it's a pity that I couldn't join this because with the one say um, and the, the beautiful islands, it would have been a very nice uh, visit, of course. Um, I'd like to uh, give a short introduction, although you never know uh, how long it will take. Um, it's very interesting. I will share some slides, and I have to do it in presentation mode. Yeah, I see that you can see this uh, slide. It's uh, very good, but. I hope I can scroll down. Is it still in the presentation mode? No, not yet. Um, I'm indeed Director of Mission Innovation, which is a global initiative. And as the previous speaker was already was saying, uh, we have the Sustainable Development Goals. It's very good to, to think about why are we doing this? 
and that's why we have a, a, a global challenge of combating the climate change. Um, we would like to generate sustainable jobs and growth, as also in the, uh, with the previous speaker. Um, energy access is very important, and also energy security. Uh, we would really like to make it a clean, secure, um, affordable energy system. And hydrogen is playing a role, and that's why we are also uh, here uh, talking about the hydrogen valleys. Um, as mission innovation, we have set a target of reducing the cost of clean hydrogen. Um, it's an inspirational goal. Uh, we all uh, face inflation as well lately, um, the price of two US dollars per kilogram, but the main effort is we have to make it cheaper. And we would like to do that via investing in research innovation uh, by demonstrating as well new technologies and creating an enabling environment. And, and by demonstration, we really would like to do it via so-called hydrogen valleys. Um, look, um, we have different members from all parts of the world, um, and was already in, the, in one of the slides, um, Friesland, Flieland is part of this world. Uh, so that's very, very clear. So the hydrogen valleys, um, we have the aim to have 20, in 2030, 100 green hydrogen regions, um, valleys uh, operational, um, which is it's quite ambitious. The number 100 on the global level doesn't seem very high, but, um, but to make it operational, it, it's, a, it's really a challenge. Um, I think it's uh, very good, and uh, there are some brochures from Mission Innovation uh, presented together with the Clean Hydrogen Partnership uh, on Hydrogen Valleys, uh, a lot of information on what it is and what it's looking for. But what makes a hydrogen valley as such, and that's something where we have the production of hydrogen, uh, the, together with the demand, also end uses, to build up a real hydrogen system. In the production of hydrogen, it's very important to have uh, clean hydrogen renewable energy sources. Um, so that's very important um, to be aware of. Um, we would like to cover the whole value chain. Um, and we would like to have it in a small geographical uh, area because it's also uh, limiting, in fact, the transport costs and, and make it easier to implement. The sector itself is always saying, okay, um, we are supplying, but where is the demand? But the demand is always saying, uh, where is the supply? So I think the hydrogen valley, its strength is really to bring the supply and demand together. In between, there is distribution and storage. And uh, it's sometimes forgo uh, we forget that. It's a very part, uh, important part of the, of the structure. Um, as mission innovation, um, we have, uh, together with the Clean Hydrogen Partnership, set up a hydrogen valley platform. And um, I think it's very good to have a look into that, um, the different analysis. Look, um, you see on the top, uh, on, the, on the platform, it's h2v.eu. Um, you all have your mobile phone. I, I hope you're not watching it now, but uh, maybe later on. Um, but have a look to h2v.eu and you see there is some analysis, so a toolbox, matchmaking, and that can the platform offer. You do it now in person, the matchmaking, which is very good. Um, looking to, for instance, uh, the analysis, um, there are some statistics uh, available on the hydrogen valleys, which are already in the platform. Uh, there is also a chapter on uh, barriers, um, but it's also about sharing best practices. And I think it's, uh, I discovered any, every time something new in the, in, the, in the platform, in fact, and on the statistics, I, I, I really uh, would invite you to have a look because I also think, okay, all the different aspects in making an hydrogen valley. Look, um, in this case, uh, there is something on, on finance, main activities in commercial um, and, and financing phase, an important one, and they show, okay, what are the different hydrogen valleys busy with? Um, and there are many aspects. On, on the hydrogen valley platform, we have now more than 80 uh, hydrogen valleys. Uh, the focus is in Europe. Uh, not yet in Freeland, but um, I, I, I think it's very good to know that it's also in Asia and Americas and also in uh, yeah, the MENA Africa region also uh, kicking off the hydrogen valleys. And that's, I think, very good to know that when you are busy with the hydrogen valley, you're not alone. There are many initiatives in, in the, uh, on the globe, and I think that's something uh, to be aware of, that you're part of the system and that you have collaborators. 
at the European Commission, um, we are pushing a lot for the hydrogen valleys, and we really would love to see them happen because it's bringing the, the supply and demand together. Um, we believe as well that for hydrogen valleys, that research innovation is playing an important role, um, knowledge sharing, matchmaking, um, that we have to look for synergies, um, but also development of education and training for skills to, to make it really happen. And that's why um, in March this year, a joint declaration was signed to, to really work on these different aspects of the hydrogen valleys. And we are developing at the moment a hydrogen valley roadmap. I can give too many details in just 10 minutes as well. But in fact, we would like to see a duplication of hydrogen valleys um, uh, happening. Um, we have identified now 20, 55 valleys in the EU, um, but they are in different stages of development. And they are not yet operational. And you are fully aware of that. Although later in the program you have Haven, which is close to, to real full operation. Um, and I think we can learn from that. Needs for joint acceleration um, for, to the deployment is needed, and that's why we are developing this roadmap. We have launched a call for evidence, and, and we, I want to share some results. Um, and one of is most important is the, the identification of all of the barriers. And in this slide, you see some of them. Uh, unclear regulatory framework is on the second place with cost effectiveness of clean hydrogen production. Um, hydrogen storage and transportation is not fully clear yet. They see it in need as a barrier. Um, lack of insufficient production. Uh, it's also important to reduce the cost. They are very linked to each other. But also lack of standards and code, um, codes. Funding, um, uh, skilled people is needed, finding sufficiently skilled people. So all the different aspects have to be addressed in developing the hydrogen valleys. This is what I wanted to share. And I, I, I think it's, it's very good that you are today uh, together. But what is, I think, important to bring them forward is that you believe in the power of collaboration, uh, that you really work together. And, um, and but also to learn um, who are your partners to fully understand what they are envisaging. And we all talk today about the hydrogen valley, but maybe sometimes you have a different idea of how it should look like, of maybe different end users or have different sizes, large scale, small scale, etc. Try to speak with each other and to listen what the others can contribute and what he has in mind. I think that's also that you play the same music. It, it, it's not easy, huh? When you say, I love music, your neighbor has a different taste. And I think in the collaboration, you have to try to find the same pathway. And that's why you are there and that you can talk with each other and learn from each other. Really, believe in the power of collaboration and try to get the, the best out of each other, I would say. Um, thank you for inviting me, and I would like uh, to give my floor uh, to the colleague to the Clean Hydrogen Partnership. Uh. Thank you very much. The power of collaboration is also... Speakers, we prepare. Everyone will receive a round of applause before and after. Uh, the power of collaborations, and that's the reason why you are also here, to network, to build partnerships, and uh, probably we will be able to build a hydrogen valley also in Finland at some point. Let's see. Um, thank you for this. I will now give the floor to uh, Pietro Calabrisco, who is now project officer at the Clean Hydrogen Partnership. Are you with us? Yes, perfect. He has a background. Yes, good morning. Uh, working for the associations in the solar industry, also in NGOs for uh, special, specializing specifically in transport, uh, transition for uh, fuels for transport. And now he's presenting what the Clean Hydrogen Partnership is doing to help project developers set up uh, hydrogen barriers. So the technical support that can be done. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for inviting us and for the very nice event so far in the inspiring presentations. I will try to stay to the same level. So my name is indeed Pietro Calabrisco, I'm a project officer at the Clean Hydrogen um, Joint Undertaking, or partnership as we wish. And I'm stepping in for 
my colleague Antonio Guido, who is actually the one following the Green Island uh, project, but I'm working with him on the Valley, so I hope that uh, can uh, share quite some interesting information with you. Of course, the time is limited, so we try to really uh, touch upon the tip of the iceberg and give a little bit of a sense of what we have been doing so far and what are the plans ahead when it comes specifically to the support to the hydrogen valleys. Maybe let me just start indulging me with the usual introduction slide to explain uh, who we are. So, who is the Clean Hydrogen Joint Undertaking? Uh, maybe not all of you are familiar with us. But we are simply a public-private partnership where the public part is represented by the European Commission and Hydrogen Europe and Hydrogen Europe Research are bringing the, the private side both bringing the industry and the research um, communities into the governance. And this governance, they together, the Commission and the private sector, have the mission to decide how strategically to distribute the funds which are available to our outfit in order to push the development and the deployment of fuel cells and hydrogen technologies in the several sectors where it can help for the decarbonization. So be that in transport, be that in the um, energy sector. We are being created under the Horizon Europe Framework Program and assigned 1 billion euros, which is a ring fence dedicated only to this technology. On top of that, and I will come back to that later, in May in uh, 2022, in the framework of the Repower uh, Plan, we have also been assigned an additional 200 million, which are still to be dedicated to fuel cells and hydrogen, but specifically for valleys. And we will see a little bit more what that means. But before we get there, maybe let's recall a little bit what has been the support that uh, we have been providing uh, throughout the years. So now we arrived uh, where we are today with this clear concept, as Matai was explaining earlier, about what is a valley. Now that we have maybe different ideas, but we have a common understanding of what a valley should be. I think that it's fair to say that uh, for us, the world, the, all the activities started back in 2016 with the uh, Regions Initiative. I understand six, seven years ago, the situation was quite different from what we see today. Today, fuel cells and hydrogen, we could say, are considered as a mainstream technology to help us with the decarbonization. But back then, maybe it was more considered as, I wouldn't say, a laboratory experiment, but more of a technology with a bright future, still a future, not something for today to be implemented. And the valley is the best embodiment of how the times have changed. Like a valley is something that you want to do today. We use these technologies today. But back then, there was still very little awareness, understanding of the technology. Well, from the technical point of view, maybe there was not so much funding available. And also the regulatory framework was even more define that it is still today uh, to a certain extent. So of course we know the cities and regions are at the forefront in the implementation of any of the European goals for the carbonization or the energy transition. Then this needs to happen on the ground, right? In the local transport in how you produce the energy, how you transport it and use it. Uh, however, often due to this fact that uh, fuel cells and hydrogen are still pretty much a niche technology, there wasn't much willingness to experiment with the technologies and leave alone to start with the deployment of ambition valleys. So it is in this framework that we started to work on the development of the concept of the hydrogen valleys. And we started maybe also to work on the definition. So this was at the end of the day, what we try to achieve with the uh, regions initiative. So we have gathered around the table a large number of uh, regions that uh, had an interest in the technologies, and we started to work you know, together through surveys, publishing reports, starting to identify the early business cases, how you know you could start to operate, for example, fleets of uh, cap captive fleets such as buses. And the, on the basis of that, then we also have produced a, a number of reports where we were uh, describing all these learnings and the possible way ahead. And all of that led that also to this nice initiative, which was the uh, signature of our memorandum of understanding involving 89 regions from 22 countries, 
where they declare their willingness to keep on working together in order to push forward um, you know, the development and the deployment of uh, fuel cells uh, technologies local level. And out of these initial, uh, let's say, exchanges we had, there were a number of uh, actually concrete follow-ups. One of them was the project of developing assistance. So again, the idea was, okay, we have done the first uh, exploration mission, we have more or less defined what are the key desires of the regions, what are the main difficulties that are met, let's go one step forward. So we started to work with single regions that had uh, an interest, and they had an idea, and we helped them to transform this idea into viable projects. So projects with a structure that are ready to be implemented and receive funding. So really these were type of consultancy services. Huh? So you see there is like a continuum in the idea of what, how we wanted to push ahead uh, the development of the valleys. We started with the PA, PDA number one and now there is the PDA number two that is uh, still taking place. So we are still helping to create this pipeline of projects, pipeline of valleys to be deployed throughout Europe. Then, we also heard about the platform that has been created, which is another powerful tool that will provide you a lot of uh, information so on uh, you know, how to go about the development of a valley. And then last but not least, all these activities, they also have a concrete impact on the funding that is disbursed every year by the joint undertaking. And it's maybe also interesting to have a little bit of a look here at what has happened so far. So you see, we started already with the dedicated call for proposals for the development of hydrogen valleys already in 2015. Though back then we were still talking about hydrogen territories, let's say that we still the concept was a little bit nebulous, it wasn't very well defined. Then there was a little bit of a gap. We continued in 2018 with heaven, and then well, I'm pretty sure you're aware of the other topic dedicated to the hydrogen development of a valley in the, in the islands. So it's the Green Island project. And uh, each one of these projects was really important, not only for its own you know, local reality, but because they were little pieces of the puzzle that were coming, starting to come together. They had to define you know, what the valley can look like, what are the typical obstacles that you will meet in the real life when you are going ahead with the deployment of these uh, valleys. And there was really a lot of learnings that these valleys uh, provided. Then, as I said earlier, it yeah, happens yeah. that in uh, 2022 we got this additional uh, injection of funds, which were dedicated uh, just for the deployment of hydrogen valleys from the Repower plan. And you can see immediately, without going too much into the details, just look at the sheer number of uh, valleys that we were able to support as of then. So we are already talking about 13 valleys altogether. And if you look at the map, on the right hand side of the slide, you see that we start to have a, a nice coverage at European level of this, uh, the good spread of these uh, hydrogen valleys. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, can I quickly ask you to please wrap up because then we can also go with the. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you. I just arrived to my final slide. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> uh, no, it's just, I mean, I'm not going to say anything new, so it's going to take uh, like just a few seconds. Uh, I think it's important here to notice that really the fact that the technology has matured a lot, it has opened the field for more applications, so it really helps for the, um, the creation of these valleys because then we could really uh, create an ecosystem. And uh, well, there are the other point I would like to mention here that really uh, front runner projects such as the one of Green Islands were important, as I said, to show that uh, these technologies are viable for the decarbonization of the sector and they really show the way for anybody else that followed up and they wanted to replicate the valleys. Sorry if I took so long, that was it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And you mentioned the Green Island project, which is actually now going to be presented by Tatiana Block, working for NRC, uh, becoming a senior engineering uh, at NRC, and will present our uh, project. So, yes. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, yes, I am here uh, representing NRC, which is a partner in the, in the project, and I'm very glad to be. Um, 
part of this event and having the opportunity to, to introduce to you the Green Highland Project, which is uh, the third uh, project in, uh, uh, that has been funded by the European Commission and the C through the CHP, but it's the very first uh, Harrien Valley project that has been uh, developed in an island, in a southern uh, European island. So um, this project is uh, coordinated by Enagas Renewables, and I'm here on their behalf to present uh, the deployment of, of, of this Harrien Valley. Um, which is, um, we are going to move a little bit from theory to practice, and I'm going to tell you how this, the practice is going. Um, as I said, uh, we are I'm representing NFC. NFC is also has been part of the uh, of the design uh, of the project. It's been we have been involved very early, in a very early stage in the in the project. We've been part of the design. We can contribute to the European Union you know, funding. Uh, of the project, and also now we are part of the uh, technology, uh, uh, technical deployment advisory group, and we are also involved in certain projects, uh, research projects that I'm going to explain later on. This is the next slide. And um, well, I would like to start uh, more in depth about uh, going more in depth into the into the project. Um, the first thing uh, I would like to explain or, or share with you is the why we needed to have such a project in the Mallorca island. And um, uh, this comes uh, on a basis that we need to boost, or there was a need to boost the local economy in the island. So traditionally, the, the, there is a high enterprise or, or activity of uh, uh, enterprise in, in, in tourism, in the sector of tourism. And um, as is well known, but also in the past there was a plant of cement that was closed. So there were there, uh, a lot of jobs were into risk, and uh, therefore the, uh, there is um, there was a local necessity to boost that economy, and there is an opportunity to develop the, that economy through the uh, production of green hydrogen. And, the, and developing the whole value chain, not only the production, but also implementing the whole value chain to, to make uh, an impact from the social uh, economic point of view in, in the area. Um, so, wow, uh, now the, the, um, this is an overview of the concept, and it basically, I already mentioned it, we are developing and deploying a whole value chain of, of green hydrogen that starts with the production, of, uh, of green hydrogen using solar uh, uh, energy that is harnessed through solar panels uh, in a location in the north of the island, well, two locations in the northern part of the island. And then um, uh, we are also developing the infrastructure that is needed to store and to distribute the green hydrogen to be used in different applications uh, uh, in uh, different locations in the island. So what kind of uh, applications are we uh, are talking about? Like, For example, uh, it will be, the green hydrogen will be used as a fuel for mobility in land, and um, it will be also used as a fuel to generate electricity for um, decarbonization of um, the built environment, uh, well, in terms of electricity and also of heating. <laughs> I will go on in detail in the next slides. Well, the, um, the deployment of the value chain here is in, we have in the, um, a more schematic view of the uh, and data uh, for those who are interested and curious um, on the value chain. So we see the three main, uh, three main pillars as we have mentioned in the previous uh, uh, presentations and my introduction. So uh, uh, for the, um, um, I already mentioned that we have a hydrogen plant fed by uh, green electricity from solar uh, with an electrolyzer that uh, with a capacity of 2.5 megawatts. Um, we will be also, well, we are already uh, developing uh, the trailers, trailers that are going to be used for the uh, distribution of the green hydrogen. Um, and 
um, in the end of the slide, towards the right side of the slide, you will see different applications, more in detail. Um, so one of the applications that we have uh, and we are testing is the injection of green hydrogen in the natural gas system, um, uh, which is uh, one uh, of a uh, characteristic of our very particular application for, for a green hydrogen body, a very unique uh, in, in this project. And we're going to start uh, with a mixing of 5% and uh, well, permittings and uh, is, is, are already ongoing um, for, for, for this uh, activity. Uh, in the terms of mobility, uh, we, have, um, we have to implement also the infrastructure uh, and we have one uh, hydrogen refueling station already set in place ready to fill in uh, buses, five buses that have been deployed, uh, fueled by hydrogen, green hydrogen, and in the future we are uh, also uh, going to feed uh, the fuel for, uh, for uh, regular uh, small vehicles. Um, and and the, well, in the bottom, we also had the, um, the applications of individual environment uh, in in a hotel in the port of Valiars uh, 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 setting and in one building uh, of the um, of a municipality in Doceta. Okay, so this is basically showing what I just told you but, uh, with a different perspective. This is more in the island perspective. So we can see the different locations where uh, uh, the deployment is taking place. Um, uh, what you see uh, in between the location one and two, where we have the Yoseta location with the production plant, the dotted line represents the trajectory that, uh, or, or some theoretical uh, representation of the trajectory that will be uh, done uh, through the, um, by the trailers to bring the hydrogen from the plant to the, uh, the end user points. So we have the number three uh, is, the, is a pipeline that is hydrogen pipeline that is also being uh, constructed by the and developed by the, the project in order that uh, it will be connecting to the main natural gas system for that mixing exercise that we are implementing or project that we are implementing. And uh, also uh, you, will, you see more in the coastline uh, the other applications in mobility and built environment and in the ports. Um, some of the figures um, here on, the, on this, uh, are in these slides related to the project. I already talked talk about the capacities and uh, um, a little bit of the technical aspects of it. But I would like to highlight the impact of the project in, from the environmental point of view. Um, we have um, estimated a, 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 a uh, carbon emission avoidance on, on the order of 21,000 uh, tons per year when the full, after full implementation of the project. And um, I already mentioned also in my introduction the relevance of the project for uh, the for boosting the social, uh, for, uh, for the socioeconomic uh, uh, aspects of, in the island. So we expect to also generate jobs and employment direct and, and direct employment through the uh, deployment of the, of the project or the value chain. Um, the investments, uh, we're talking about 50 million uh, total investment, 50 million euros and part of it, 10 million euros have been um, founded by the uh, Clean Hydrogen Partnership. Um, and uh, in the next slides, um, I would like to elaborate more about the aspects of the scalability and replicability. That is a key factor or a, a, a key element on the, uh, on the concept of a hydrogen body, of a green hydrogen body. Um, so one of the things, uh, or the main activities of the green hydrogen body is to be able to share the knowledge uh, that we learn uh, in the deployment phase and in the uh, operation phase that uh, is also considered during, in, in a typical project. And uh, the idea is to be able to have, to bring the knowledge to similar settings uh, that can benefit 
out of that, those experiences. And here we have uh, Ameland as a local uh, uh, island that is following our activities um, and participating active, actively in the project as well to learn um, out of it. But also we have several uh, locations across uh, Europe and also internationally speaking. We have Chile as a participant, Morocco. So this is how we get to spread the knowledge um, generated in the project. How do we do all this? It's a major undertaking indeed, and we do that through the collaboration of many partners uh, involved in this particular project. We have 31 pro uh, partners involved um, that uh, play different roles and uh, actively working together for this period of five years that the project will be developed or will be active. We started in 2021. It's been uh, almost three years on the road. And well, uh, the project is uh, going uh, mainly as, pla as planned. And we start to, we're going to start soon, hopefully next year, in 2024, the operational phase of it. Um, so well, this is just a, a bit of sense of, of the size of the project. And my last slide is about um, the, those scale-up and replication activities that are also part of the, of the project and are very and not less visible, uh, at, least, at least at this early stage of the project. Um, but uh, they're really important to uh, set you know, that platform to um, exchange learning some uh, collaboration with uh, across Europe and international. So basically, um, what we do in, in this project and in Harry and Valley project is to start small, learn by doing, and then uh, think about how it's going, going to be the replication, the, the scale of, of those activities that we are performing now in the future. So for that, within the Green Hydrogen project, uh, Green Hydrogen sorry, Green Highland Project, uh, we have a, well, a research group, a research activity, where we look at uh, and make estimations and forecasts on how the supply will grow and how the demand will grow and what is the infrastructure required to connect those. Um, and on top of that, because if this is an island and the maritime activity is really important, we also have other uh, projects related to the decarbonization of activities in the maritime sector. So we're talking about the decarbonization of uh, the, the activities related to the um, terminals in the port, the passenger terminals in the port, and colliding activities also for uh, ships in the, in, the, uh, in, the floor, in the in the port. This will have an impact not only in terms of CO2 emission, but also an environmental impact on reducing um, uh, noise and reducing pollution in the, in the port area. Um, we're also looking at uh, how to fuel um, ferries with hydrogen um, as part of the maritime activities that we're looking at. Um, then the as, as a consequence of these of these studies, we will establish a roadmap uh, with uh, outlook to 2050 for the islands in Mallorca, um, and we are also in parallel working with the replication uh, studies and tool development, a replication tool development that can be used in the future for uh, in other locations, and that's that, that, that's the connection for me. To, for the afternoon sessions that we're going to have here to be played uh, for, for the, in, the, in the workshops. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Katerina. <laughs> Indeed, we will have a, a, a bite of uh, the replication uh, uh, studies that we're making this afternoon. Thanks for making this point, and thanks for presenting it. Just one thing, uh, now we will, we're running a bit uh, slightly uh, on late. But we will have some uh, the time for some uh, quick questions. Uh, if you have, uh, if we have any questions from the audience, maybe two questions maximum. And I invite the speakers to one be very extremely uh, punctual because we don't have much time, and also to speak loud because we have received some 
communications from the speakers uh, or from the participants online, we would uh, need more uh, uh, to speak a bit louder. So just this remark. Any questions from the audience? We have two questions from the audience. We can, okay, please uh, say to whom you are referring the question and your question. Okay, hello, my name is Kaza Pentil. I represent the region of Ostrobotnia. Um, I would have a question for project officer Pietro Halopriesko. Mm -hmm. um, and I would be interested in hearing more about the PDAs uh, that the Clean uh, Hydrogen Partnership uh, could be offering, or are there still programs uh, that can be applied to? Did you hear the question, Pietro? Yes, 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 it's not easy, but okay, I will get straight to the point as you requested. So, as I said, there are two PDAs, one is already over, the other one is already ongoing. So, if you are directly interested in joining this one, it's a little bit late. That said, I see, we see that there is a little bit, a lot of appetite for this type of support in order to help the ideas to become ready, to become projects, then to apply to us or to other funds which are available at European or national level. So I would say expect for more of this type of support to come online. Uh, our next uh, um, also annual work plan will be published uh, late next year. I do not have a guarantee that we will have another tender included in that one, but that will be the first appointment. Not to miss if you want to get an update. And then uh, I'm sure there will be more of these uh, support uh, activities that will be offered uh, in, in the future. Sorry, I have to be short. Oh, well, that's perfect. And also maybe join the newsletter. I don't know if also they are advertised in the newsletter. This calls. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. On our website, social media newsletter, you always find that with information. And we have a pop someone pop in. Uh, yes, Matthias? Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to ask as well what kind of support do you then really need? You don't have to answer them. But PDA is very broad. We also clear in what kind of help you really uh, are missing there. I would say that especially for uh, small regions like ours that get quite uh, little cohesion funding, so just uh, support for the, the regional government to actually be the initiators of this project. So we have a lot of uh, industry investing in our region right now and, and a lot of interest in a hydrogen valley, but uh, the kind of the governmental side needs to step up to these challenges as well. So, so that is the, the news. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you also for uh, adding this up. Second question. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Alfons Goeke from GKN Hydrogen. We are a company expert in storing hydrogen. <coughs> my question is to the uh, regulatory framework and especially to storing. Uh, we are in several projects, not, not in the in the high islands. But uh, we have been facing, for example, in the Netherlands, problems with the authorization. And I was going to ask uh, Tatiana, how, how was this on the islands? So I know if you are storing a certain amount of hydrogen, it's getting very complicated to get permissions. Mm -hmm. Have there been clear rules? Because what we're facing is that the rules are so different, and this is really uh, like, like hesitating and, and bringing down the speed uh, for all those projects. Comment on this, yeah. please. All right. Thanks. Uh, well, in 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 Highland, the element of storage uh, in terms of fuel volume is uh, relatively small because um, the applications are, uh, that we are considering require, you know, relatively small volumes. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we are working. NRC has been working in, in the development of uh, of, of this. Um, to the studies in the uh, for the port uh, maritime port activity, so we have to store have some small storage of hydrogen there um, for um, yeah for the daily use to generate electricity, mm -hmm. and uh, that's something that uh, we had to, to cover um, in, in our study, and we found out that indeed the local uh, there's no local regulation. Uh, uh, and normally this is has to be developed by the local uh, uh, government. So uh, what we are recommending and looking at is um, in Spain, and maybe uh, uh, my colleague um, can speak more about uh, what is happening at the Spain level in terms of regulation for storage, but there has been a study and recommendations done 
on this area. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to add some points. Uh, indeed, now in Spain, because uh, we had uh, uh, an industry from the petrol, uh, hydrogen has been used uh, from years ago. Mm -hmm. So there is some regulatory that already manage these uh, storage applications. Mm -hmm. But uh, these uh, barriers that uh, are very uh, strong uh, because the industrial application of the petrol is very big uh, storage, so the, the load now is uh, very strict. Mm -hmm. So now we are indeed uh, performing studies to identify these barriers and to make a document uh, to give to the administrations in order to change things in the law for enhance the, the fast uh, deployment. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Another big round of applause for all the speakers. <laughs> and we also managed to cause up a bit with, uh, with the delay, so it's, it's perfect, I think. Uh, we can start, we can now thank you all, uh, Albert and Tatiana, for, uh, for being here. And we can give the floor also to the next speakers coming, presenting the Hydrogen, pro hydrogen Valley projects. So uh, we can welcome Gerte and Indalefio, please come here. And then we also have Elina online, of course. So we'll start with Gerte, who has a background as a public affairs, in public affairs and also working in the uh, onshore wind energy industry. And now she said that she found her uh, ideal job of, uh, here managing the Heaven Project, one of the biggest ones in the, the Netherlands. So please, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you so much, Christian. Uh, good afternoon, all, and uh, good media to our Christian host, of course. Uh, I'm here to present the Heaven project. I think many of you have heard of the project or have maybe a very thorough knowledge of it, so I will skip through the project itself quite quickly. And then we have some lessons learned, some things to maybe avoid, and a little bit of information about state aid rules that might be relevant for you. I think we'll spend a little bit more time on those last lessons, so you can click it. Um, we are, I don't know, this is just the contents, click it on. Uh, Heaven stands for Hydrogen Energy Applications in a Valley Environment in the Northern Netherlands. Uh, it's a name that lends itself to lots of jokes. Uh, we invite people to the Heaven region sometimes, and one time someone said, I'm not ready to go to Heaven yet. So we're very, very happy with that name. This is, of course, the reason why the Heaven project landed in the north of the Netherlands. We have a lot of natural gas. Um, uh, winning of the gas has stopped currently, or is about to stop, uh, and the region was really looking for a new industry, uh, a way to keep the jobs, keep the expertise, and also keep the um, uh, financial product, of course, within the region, and hydrogen was seen as a very good solution to build a new, to pivot to a new industry while reusing infrastructure, pipelines, and also expertise. Uh, next, please, and also the next, please. This is very small. <laughs> it's normally it's bigger, so I hope you all brought your reading glasses. Our goal is to create an uh, integrated high green hydrogen infrastructure, um, a value chain. So we have production, we have transport, we have storage, and we have uh, 11 different sectors of end use. So we really can test to see what works, what doesn't work. The entire project was designed in 2019, so we have already seen some things that do not work. And uh, uh, sometimes it's a bit of a bother to have it in your project still, because you do need to bring it to the end if you already know that it might not be the best solution. But that's what these big projects mean sometimes. Um, we have a financial scope now of 98 million euros uh, estimated budget and we run until the end of 2027. So we have some time to go. Next, please. Uh, these are objectives and also, well, one thing that might be important to mention is that uh, I think a very important part of this project is to solve the chicken and egg problem. So we see so many entrepreneurs who say, I do want to buy a hydrogen car, but I cannot refuel it anywhere. And then we see, um, 
companies building refueling stations that say we don't want to build an HRS because no one has a hydrogen car. So by building this one big integrated value chain within the region, you have your entire infrastructure already set up. And then it's much easier for entrepreneurs, for companies to add on to that and purchase maybe more cars, put more HRSs, put more production, uh, different end uses, because already the basis is there. And I think that's a very important part of heaven, what heaven is meant to achieve. Next, please. These are our partners. We have 31 partners in six different European countries. Let's take a picture of it for <laughs> <laughs> fun. And of course, our sponsors, thank you very much. Now we look at the structure. Um, these are our four clusters. So this is similar to what you just saw on the Green Highlands, tiny little bit larger. And we will move through them one by one so that you can really see what is in the different clusters. Here they are geographically, and we are um, uh, there currently. But this is our uh, region where we are. Next, please. Uh, this is how we are located on the backbone. So you see that we are very well located on the hydrogen backbone that will be built in the Netherlands. And where uh, we are, the Heaven region is all the way on top with the Jules and Highstock and HCE Next are also part of our project. And uh, This is cluster one. <laughs> it's, sometimes I have a clicker and it's very, very convenient. Our cluster one is in the Eemshaven Del Cell area. This is where a lot of hydrogen production is planned or is uh, about to take place. So uh, we have Florida the Seaport as a very important partner. Of course, also the Jules factories will be there. And there will be a hydrogen hub where hydrogen um, as a waste product from the Novion factories will be uh, purified, compressed, and then moved into the valley so that will be pumped into the backbone once it's there and that will be used for many different end uses um this is what i just basically told you this is our beautiful port where you see lots of uh, activity taking place next please this is the um, hydrogen barge boat that is in our project and this is actually an icon within our project this is um very advanced already and it's i think it's already running but not formally yet running this is a barge boat running completely on hydrogen and you see that also national press is very interested in it they film him a lot for news um this is ng trying to build a one gigawatt scale uh, hydrogen plant in Eemshaven. next and this is how they envision to use uh, uh, waste products as well to build uh, a methanol factory within the Eemshaven area. Next, please. So we move on to cluster two. Cluster two is all around the built environment. So that's more hydrogen storage and also hydrogen offtake. Next, please. We have uh, hydrogen houses, so heating on uh, hydrogen in Hogeveen area where they are building new houses and also converting existing houses into hydrogen. And we have hydrogen storage in a salt cavern and hydrogen as a backup power source for a data center. Next, please. This is a testing with the salt cavern. So you don't really see, but it's down below. It's a giant cavern and here they are pumping hydrogen in to see if it's completely leak proof and uh, uh, if they can get it pressurized and testing so far has been really successful. Please, this is our data center, uh, which can be uh, powered by hydrogen with its own fuel cell. Next, please. And this is the tiny house. Uh, this is actually one of my favorites because they built this small house to show citizens of Hall of Fame what it would look like if your house is run on hydrogen. Because people can sometimes be hesitant to just convert their house to hydrogen. That feels like uh, maybe something that's a little bit scary. And Thank you. <laughs> By having this little uh, house where they can just see what it looks like in their hydrogen boiler and what does the storage look like and what do I need to keep in mind when my house runs on hydrogen, uh, it starts to feel more comfortable and it's easier for them to convert to hydrogen because it's an, an optional thing for people. They are not forced to use hydrogen. And I think this is a, a very important part in our hydrogen transition that we're doing to really keep in mind that for some people it's very foreign 
and maybe a little bit scary that we need to keep everyone on board if we want to uh, make this transition happen. Cluster 3 is all around mobility. That's not true. Cluster 3 is all around uh, the Emmen chemical park, uh, Emmen industrial area. Next, please. Uh, here we're building an HRS for buses to refuel. There will be an electrolyzer. There's a, a steam engine gas turbine uh, for steam generation running on hydrogen. And they are building a lot of infrastructure also to uh, connect to the backbone as well. This is the HRS, it's already there, so if you drive a bus, you can feel free to refuel in Emmen. This is the, uh, so this used to be just a very traditional industrial park and they're completely converting to hydrogen. It's very ambitious and they are able to run their uh, turbine on 100% hydrogen already. They are not doing that currently because hydrogen is very expensive, as we already saw in the list earlier of hurdles. Um, so it just doesn't make a closing business case for them basically, but they would be able to run 100% on hydrogen. Next. And this is the former uh, gas um, area where they're also really experimenting with different kinds of renewables. So you see biogas, you see PV solar, and also large hydrogen um, area. And this is cluster four, which is about mobility, um, where entrepreneurs are purchasing 100 cars, there are taxi, uh, a taxi company purchasing vehicles, there is the municipality of Groningen, which is also present here, purchasing various vehicles as well, uh, heavy duty vehicles and uh, various HRSs being built. And also next, this is um, the HRS that's being planned on Groningen Airport Eelde for landside refueling. And this are some vehicles as examples from the municipality of Groningen. So you see that they can also have uh, waste trucks on hydrogen, which is very impressive. These are our beautiful hydrogen buses. And next. So we have work package four, which is really focusing on um, basically taking into account this entire value chain and to see how the hydrogen um, flows through the, basically through the system and to learn some lessons. Work package five is also present here. Um, there are various studies mostly aimed at business models uh, and the impact and the replication of this valley to really see how it connects with the world outside of our valley. And then we have work package six, uh, which is really focusing on the future. So how do we move forward once heaven? Heaven is of course just a tiny little step for mankind and uh, then we need to move on and scale up and how can we do that? What are the different um, values, venues that we need to uh, explore? So all of these studies, once they are finished, you can also find them on our website. They are all open source, open data. This is work package seven where we do a lot of communication, dissemination, and we really try to share our lessons with new valleys, with new initiatives, with other regions that could maybe play a part in the green hydrogen economy. So I have some tips for you. If you're thinking of starting a valley or you're maybe just starting a valley. So something that we really notice now in our project, once it was written down in 2019, uh, the sky was the limit. Everything was possible. We can have any car on hydrogen. We can have any building on hydrogen. And in the minds of the people writing down the project, <laughs> it all worked. And that's, I think that's often the case. And you need a very ambitious project, of course. Um, you need a, an ambitious proposal to be seen and to get it granted by the Clean ha uh, Hydrogen Partnership. Um, but if it's a little bit too large and too ambitious, and then there's a recession, and there's a war, and things are very expensive, and gas prices rise, and hydrogen prices rise, and there's no personnel, and then you still have to do your work that you promised in 2019, because <coughs> it can be really hard. Um, so that means that we are now doing a lot of amendments on our project as well to maybe make some changes, but even very small things like when we applied for our coal, fuel cells were the best thing. And now everyone is talking about internal combustion engine technology. But the Clean Hydrogen Partnership said, well, it was a fuel cell coal. And the entrepreneurs say, but 
internal combustion engine, that's where it's at. So that's a conversation that can sometimes be um, something you have to navigate, but it's good when making your proposal to find a balance between building something beautiful and ambitious and really unique, and also realizing that once it's granted, you will have to do it. You're not building a beautiful balance. Um, we find that for some partners, EU funding is also a blessing, but also a bit of a curse, because it does come with a lot of rules. Especially if you're a smaller entrepreneur, it might sometimes feel, uh, they are sometimes used to working just by what feels right, or maybe doing some business with your neighbor who happens to have a second-hand car, and then you run into EU regulations where that's completely not done. And there's a bit of a disconnect between how just smaller, medium enterprises work and how Europe works. And um, to really be aware of that and to make your partners aware also that getting European funding means that there are quite a lot of rules and for example they will have to do a lot of reporting, you have a lot of insights in their results and that's completely fair but they do need to be aware of it. We ran into a lot of problems with co-financing and with state aid rules where it turned out that just getting some extra co-financing from all kinds of other parties was not as, as easy as it was expected. Um, and basically the fourth, fourth point is maybe a bit of the same as the second point. Um, it's good to really make sure that everyone knows what's happening because otherwise at the end of a project it turns out you're not getting the funded and that's of course so detrimental to being a part of this uh, energy transition. Um, some things that we fi found very helpful in our project is to have a combination of different partners, to have municipalities, have university, have consultancies, um, very small companies and also very large companies, uh, to have a very clear project structure that we just looked at. So we have the clusters and we have the work packages. I feel that works really well. They all have their own goals, they have their own deliverables and milestones that they need to uh, achieve. And it at least helps to see who needs to do what. For us it helped to be one of the first valleys because it really helps us share our message across. So it helps to do something unique that other people want to learn from. Um, because that really makes gives you the chance to connect, I think, with other projects. Some details on financing, because people find this really interesting. And this, I sent an update, but this is the old version. It's 20 million euros from the Clean Hydrogen Partnership, then it's 6.3 million regional funding from Brussels and Groningen and 3.5 from Drenthe, not from Groningen. Then we have various national subsidi subsidies for the different partners adding up to probably around 10 million and the uh, rest of the finances are just from partners themselves, resulting in our 98 million euro project scope. And some information on state aid rules because if you have a European project and you want some extra money, then you will for sure meet these rules and they are amazing. We loved, <laughs> we loved exploring the world of state aid and general block exemption rules. It was great fun. Um, so it is in itself a really valuable measure. I think state aid is there to make sure that um, uh, states, member states, do not give a false advantage to certain companies by just giving them money. There are some actions that are exempt from being state aid by definition and they are they fall under the general block exemption rules. So if you do something that falls into one of the articles from the GBER, then it's not state aid. But if you want to get a subsidy, a national subsidy, you have to prove that what you're doing does not fall under state aid and that is really can be very difficult because these rules are very complicated, they are all written down, you can just find them online and read them, and that's, that's a good read. Uh, but you might also <laughs> see if there's an expert or a lawyer, if you really feel that that's something you will run into probably. In our case, we wanted to get some extra co-financing from the province of Groningen, and um, we thought the entire project could be under one state aid rule, so we said it's a uh, non-economic activity, and they said that's not true, it's actually 100 different projects and they all fall under a different group. And then you need to find out what finances are associated with each activity, 
what company is doing this exact activity. If the company is a small or medium enterprise, they get a different degree of funding. But if it's run by a woman, I think it's still different. So it's a giant amount of work. Um, it takes too far to just now run you through everything that it is to need to know about state aid. Um, but it's good to be aware that if you so in our project, the, the idea was we get some European funding and then very quickly and easily get the co-financing. And just to be aware, it's not that quick and not that easy. It's possible, but it will take some time and studying. So I think I made up for some lost time. <laughs> That's perfect. All right. Thank you so much for the <laughs> encompassing presentation. <laughs> sharing the lessons learned, the best practices, I'm sure that uh, they are very useful uh, information. Uh, now we have uh, Elina Maki from Gasclip, uh, who is joining us online. She is uh, working on the development of the road bank for the hydrogen development in Finland. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, you have already shared the screen as well. And now we can also see you. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me well? Very well. Okay, great. And many thanks for the introduction and, and for the invitation to be here. And um, I'm unfortunately in the situation that I cannot present any results or learnings yet because uh, we started just um, in June this year a new Hydrogen Valley project called uh, Baltic Sea Hydrogen. And it aims to uh, demonstrate hydrogen economy around the Baltic Sea region uh, with, a, with a large cross-border hydrogen valley. So to my understanding, this is uh, one of the first ones uh, going like uh, to interregional scale. But I'm really happy to be here and, and learn from the other valleys and their experiences because we are just in the beginning of our journey. So this is really going a good point for learning. Before we go to the project uh, itself, I would like to say a few words uh, about the company I represent. So that's uh, Gasgrid Finland. Uh, we are a state-owned uh, state company and, uh, and gas transmission system operator with um, system responsibility in Finland. Oops. And uh, yeah, our background is basically in methane uh, transmission. You can actually see the picture with blue lines, the existing uh, methane network in Finland. However, recently we got uh, from the Finnish government a task to, um, to promote the development of the national hydrogen network, international infrastructure cooperation and the hydrogen market development in Finland and the surrounding areas. So basically in Finland there is now um, high expectations uh, towards hydrogen and green hydrogen and we believe that there is a lot we can provide both on national level but also on European level. And Gasprit is now going strongly to um, and very engaged to hydrogen infrastructure project, projects around the Baltic Sea region. You can actually see these uh, projects with pink lines in the figure. And to really drive this progress, uh, there was established a subsidiary of the gas grid called Gas Grid in 2022. Uh, this Vetuvergot uh, directly translates to hydrogen networks in, in English. And with this background, we are really eagerly involved in Baltic Sea hydrogen projects as a um, co-coordinator and kind of a valley lead uh, of this hydrogen valley we are developing. Uh, but then we go to the project itself. So the project is a pioneering initiative to develop and demonstrate a sector coupled and interregional hydrogen economy around different industries. And uh, we have a main valley in the project. It's, it's connecting southern Finland and Estonia. But then we also have seven connected valleys, which are located in Norway, Sweden, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Germany, and Denmark. So we are actually really uh, covering the, the Baltic Sea region with these valleys. 
Uh, here you can see a bit more details. So in the project, we are all together 40, par 40 partners from nine different countries. The project is co uh, coordinated by Click Innovation from Finland and, and from uh, by Gasgrid Finland. And as I told, we started in June this year and the project will run for five <laughs> years. And as I also mentioned, we have the seven connected valleys, but we could also call them uh, replication valleys. So the aim is that um, we can we can replicate our findings from the main valley also to these connected valleys. Uh, here we can zoom in a little bit to the main valley between uh, Finland and Estonia. Uh, I believe that each hydrogen valley developed has its own kind of pHs depending on the geographics and geopolitics, the existing energy system and so on. And, and here is listed some uh, specific pHs of our main valley. So first of all, we are developing this interregional hydrogen market between Finland and Estonia because we have very close connections in many ways between these areas. Uh, then we are also seeking for maximized value from sector integration in the area. I will say a bit uh, more words about this later on. And then also we are bringing together many end use sectors and industries from the area as they, they are strongly established in this area. And we think that we need to bring these together to co-develop the valley uh, in order to create a solid background for it. Um, then we can take a bit more look on the kind of strengths and preconditions for, for the main valley uh, from different perspectives. So from regional perspective, first of all, uh, we are creating an interconnected market between Finland and Estonia. But we don't have to start this work from the scratch because uh, on, on like physical level, there is already existing electricity and gas network connections between these two countries. Then also a good precondition for this valley is that there is a lot of high, a lot of cost competitive and uh, renewable emission free electricity available in the area. And we, this is mainly wind power. And we see a lot of uh, crowd potential for this um, renewable electricity in the area. So there is a very good preconditions for the hydrogen economy. Then we also have in Finland good availability of biogenic CO2, uh, which means that we, with the value chains, we can go uh, quite naturally beyond hydrogen and produce, for example, e-fuels. And well, as I mentioned, we have quite a strong industrial background in the area of the main valley and also uh, also digitalization is going quite far so we can we can use this um, very high level expertise also in the development of our valley and uh, then from societal side i would like to mention that uh, this area of the main valley is rather urban area. We have uh, both capital cities and also many, many other big cities in the area, which are eagerly uh, searching options to decarbonize this energy system. And we believe that with, with the hydrogen valley and different hydrogen solutions, we can really help to decarbonize different sectors, including heating, electricity and gas. Um, then, uh, if we take a little bit uh, systemic perspective, uh, as I mentioned, we are putting a lot of focus on sector coupling opportunities in the in the main valley, uh, covering uh, electricity, heating, and gas mainly. And and with this approach, we think that we can bring many benefits for the system, including cost efficiency. Then we also. Uh, study how we can most efficiently integrate the hydrogen technologies to different industries and different regions and then we aim to replicate this also in the in the other valleys and uh, yeah all the systemic aspects basically sum up to the dynamic market model which we are developing for the area and of course hoping to scale that up for other areas 
later on as well. And well, we really believe that if we take a like holistic and systemic approach for the development of this hydrogen valley, we can we can provide many benefits for the system. I already mentioned the cost efficiency, but also improved energy security and self sufficiency, which are quite important topics, especially on these days. Um, as I already mentioned, we are covering the whole value chain. Uh, in the project, starting from the renewable electricity production to hydrogen, pro hydrogen production, hydrogen infrastructure and transmission, and then to the end use sector. And with end use, we don't only mean uh, direct hydrogen utilization, but also going, going beyond hydrogen to hydrogen uh, derived products. And uh, my impression is that when we talk about sector coupled, hydrogen economy and hydrogen valley, the value chains become rather versatile and also even complex. So it's really important that we have different partners in the project covering these different um, aspects and different parts of the value chain in order to capture all of these finally to the market model and market platform implementing the market model. Then I also would like to highlight that uh, when we are talking about sector coupled um, hydrogen valley, uh, we cannot uh, see only hydrogen hydrogen market in isolation of 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 other things, but we also have to integrate it to electricity markets, heating markets, uh, power to X product markets, and transport system at least. So when we talk about very sector coupled system. Uh, it creates a lot of complexity, but we, we believe that it also um, brings there many benefits in terms of like uh, minimizing emissions and bringing cost benefits and security of energy supply. And, and these are things that we, we try to demonstrate with our valley. Uh, then how do we bring this all in, in real life and reality? So we are covering many industries and end use sectors in the project and and we address uh, the value development in the case of each of in the in the case of each industrial sector uh, through use cases so we have there over 20 different use cases where we study and demonstrate uh, hydrogen production storage transmission and use of hydrogen so so these use cases kind of build the real hydrogen valley. And as a last point, here is our work package structure of the project. I'm not going into the details, but just want to highlight that in addition of these use cases and sector coupling and marketplace, we are also uh, paying attention to social acceptance related issues and especially to replicability of this um, hydrogen valley to other areas as well. So that was it very shortly, what we are going to do during the next five years. And hopefully in the future we can also discuss about the results and learnings from this, this hydrogen valley. Thank you so much, Elina. <laughs> Indeed, as you, as you said, the project is quite new, recent, but uh, the concept is very interesting. It's a, uh, so it's good that you, thank you for presenting it today to, to all of us. Uh, now we are going with the last speaker of today, with the formal presentations, I mean, of course, who is Indiretio Gonzalez from FIEN. Uh, who is technical coordinator as fine and also has uh, some teaching experience at the university and also as an uh, evaluator of pre-European projects. So, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Christian. Uh, my pleasure. All I would like to thank to the uh, Green Highland Project and to the organization for, for giving us the opportunity uh, to know this uh, wonderful island and to uh, and, and to present the, uh, our Asturias Hydrogen ecosystem. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, 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 well, uh, very quick because I don't know what time. Uh, we we are actually on time. Okay. Uh, we are uh, we are still slowly on, on delay, with, but we are keeping the delay constant, so it's okay. perfect the time. Okay. okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, you have uh, approximately uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, okay. And then uh, we will be having the time for Q and A's as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> well. Uh, <laughs> ah, well, I think they, they f they're asking if we could speak a bit uh, louder for the okay. participants online. So the microphone is there and perhaps it could be also useful to know. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I would like to start uh, uh, talking about Asturias. Asturias is a small region in the north of Spain. Um, uh, we are known as a natural paradise. Uh, we have uh, very nice mountain, valleys, lakes. Uh, uh, beaches and 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 we are uh, uh, two percent of the population of Spain, two percent of the uh, uh, area of Spain, and two percent of the GDP of Spain. But in the case of energy and industry, the figures are different uh, because uh, we are a natural paradise, but we are uh, in, in the center of the region, uh, in a very concentrated area. Uh, we are living most of the people, and in this area. Uh, uh, there are a lot of industry. Um, and why this? Well, this is because um, uh, we, we had uh, coal uh, resources, and for the reason uh, we had a very important coal mining activity, and thermal coal power station, and, and because of that, uh, 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 there is a concentrated in this area uh, a, a very high intensive energy industry. And uh, now uh, uh, we are facing a similar situation like Rotorania, but uh, with a different fuel, with coal, uh, no natural gas, with coal. Uh, we, uh, we closed our uh, mining, uh, uh, coal mine, sorry, in, in, in 2018, uh, five years ago. Uh, we are closing now our thermal coal power station we have closed uh, two of them in 2021. Uh, uh, we are transforming now one of these thermal power stations to biomass, and uh, the other two, uh, uh, the other two, one of uh, them uh, will be closed next year, and the other one before 2030. So uh, this is our current situation. And industry, uh, the industry uh, need to decarbonize their process and in the uh, two, uh, five years, uh, they uh, need to uh, make an important investment to change all their process uh, for decarbonizing uh, the, their activity. Uh, so, uh, uh, considering this uh, current situation and considering uh, that uh, uh, Asturias uh, presents some uh, strengths uh, related with hydrogen, uh, uh, the first point is that uh, we, uh, uh, with this industrial hub, with this uh, uh, hub to CO2 emissions, uh, we are uh, expecting to have a very important uh, hydrogen demand in the in the medium term. Uh, second, we are a region in energy transition. We are producing mines. We are producing thermal power station, which means that we have now uh, industrial areas. Uh, with uh, some industrial infrastructure like uh, connections or or, uh, or water that uh, could take advantage for installing a new hydrogen plant. Um, uh, uh, in, the, in the slide you can see uh, the backbone uh, proposed by uh, Enalas uh, for the future uh, natu uh, national hydrogen grid. Uh, I, um, and you can see that there are two main axes, uh, one from south to north, and the other one from uh, east uh, to west. And these axes are uh, joined uh, in one point, that is Asturias, eh? the national area of Asturias. <laughs> so uh, 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 for uh, uh, in this point, there is a, a port uh, with a regasification plan, and uh, it's very, very well located for exporting uh, <coughs> hydrogen or, or fuels or, or ammonia uh, uh, from this uh, port to the north and center, to this area, to the north and center of Europe. 
So uh, we have a very good uh, logistic condition no, for, for new projects. And finally, uh, we are uh, uh, in that region and, and we have a, a, a very interesting supply chain uh, for supporting with the products and service to the uh, potential uh, new projects. Uh, we have uh, engineering, we have uh, mental components uh, uh, manufacturers that they, they, they are uh, now uh, working in, in other hiring projects in other parts of Europe and, and, and uh, could be a, a, a good support for, for uh, our projects. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, considering all uh, these um, points, um, in two years ago, uh, we have published uh, a regional energy strategy, and in this uh, uh, strategy, um, we uh, have defined a, a new energy model, a new regional energy model, and in this new uh, regional energy model, the, the hydrogen will play a key role. Uh, uh, in the strategy, uh, I'll include some uh, measures for promoting the use of the hydrogen and the pollution of the, of the hydrogen. Uh, and, and we are considering uh, uh, evolution of the uh, hydrogen dem regional hydrogen demand, uh, like you can see in the picture, very uh, uh, important. Uh, we are now uh, consuming around uh, uh, 20,000 tons per year. In, in 2030, we are expecting uh, to demand uh, hardly uh, uh, 200,000 uh, uh, tons per, per year. So uh, uh, we are expecting to multiply per 10 uh, times uh, our regional demand. Uh, most of this uh, hydrogen will, will be produced not in, in Asturias, will be produced in other uh, areas of, of Spain, but we are considering that a part, a small part, could be produced uh, by uh, regional installation. And uh, considering this, the first step that the Rino mm -hmm. uh, has this, uh, decided to, to do is the, uh, to set up a regional uh, hydrogen rent table. Uh, now, uh, the regional hydrogen rent table is set up by around 50 uh, regional stakeholders, uh, big companies, research centers, uh, and, and, and uh, public administration. And um, uh, one of the uh, first activities that have been carried out in the framework of this uh, hydrogen right table uh, has been the identification of the projects, uh, of the projects, uh, because uh, for us uh, uh, we realize that uh, we have a lot of projects, but uh, and, and, and some of them they uh, have some interest common, but uh, uh, they don't know each other and and and. Uh, for us, uh, uh, we consider it could be very interesting to uh, put all together uh, uh, to try to uh, promote the collaboration among them. Uh, uh, and in this way, we were able to identify uh, uh, two main blocks of projects. First, this is the High Deal Initiative. The High Deal uh, uh, is a um, uh, initiative, uh, a very ambitious uh, project that they are proposing the installation of uh, uh, more than three gigawatts of electrolyzer, not in Asturias, in other parts of Asturias, uh, of Spain, sorry, uh, for producing uh, green hydrogen with uh, solar panels. Yeah. Um, uh, we, uh, they, and, and, and they are proposing to transport this green hydrogen by pipeline uh, to the industrial uh, area of Asturias, uh, mainly for decarbonizing the steel factory and the uh, ammonia uh, production. Uh, uh, the total investment of this project is, is uh, 5 uh, billion euros, so it's very impressive. Uh, and uh, linked with this project uh, is the part that uh, is more interesting for us, that is the uh, um, transformation of our uh, industry to uh, a new industry, um, uh, to a new industry that um, uh, will be uh, will use uh, the, the green hydrogen. And in this case, uh, we are uh, foreseeing uh, uh, investment around 1.5 uh, uh, billion of euros. So it's, 
is, uh, as you can see, a very uh, impressive project. And, and the other uh, block of projects uh, is the, uh, what we have uh, called the Recode uh, Initiative, uh, that uh, is, uh, 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 well, the, uh, there are uh, 19 projects in this uh, initiative. Uh, uh, each of these projects are different, with different uh, calendar, different budget, different construction, but uh, all of them they have a common interest and for the reason we uh, have decided to group all of them in, in this uh, single initiative. Uh, the total numbers are also very impressive, uh, 19 projects, uh, uh, 1.8 billion euros uh, of investment and the uh, capacity of production of uh, 160,000 tons of hydrogen uh, per year. Uh, the main objective is to install a network of electrolyzers in the center of the region. Um, uh, most of the electrolyzers will be connected to the grid uh, and uh, with the uh, hydrogen, the hydrogen uh, produced will be used in the uh, regional industry activities, uh, in the transport sector, mainly in train and buses, and uh, in the energy sector, and even uh, some of the projects they are considering to uh, transport this uh, green hydrogen into ammonia and to export the ammonia to other parts. Um, the record is the acronym of these three words, reactivation, competitiveness, and decarbonization of Asturias uh, uh, with uh, renewable hydrogen. Uh, why reactivation? Reactivation because most of the projects are located uh, in just transition areas. Um, uh, uh, competitiveness because uh, with the implementation of the project it will be uh, possible to involve uh, around 15 co regional companies in, in, in the new renewable hydrogen market. And the carbonization because uh, we are expecting to reduce uh, 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 400,000 tons of CO2 uh, per year. Uh, next one, please. Uh, the, the more advanced uh, projects in this record initiative are uh, the Asturias Hydrogen Valley and the GH2 Soto uh, projects. Uh, and I think that they are very uh, representative uh, and um, um, they are very representative because the, the, the main uh, ambitions of, of the project is the main ambition of the recall. Um, first, in the case of the Asturias Southern Valley, they are proposing the transformation of a, a thermal power station into a, a, a hydrogen electrolyzer plant. Um, they are uh, considering uh, to, uh, well, the, the electrolyzer will be connected to the grid, but they are considering to start some uh, solar panels uh, for supplying a small quantity and um, they are considered to use uh, the hydrogen uh, for, the, uh, for a chemical industry uh, and for a semen industry. The oxygen will be used in the uh, semen industry also and um, part of the hydrogen will be used also in the, in the, um, in the uh, boiler of the uh, coal power plant. Um, they, uh, now they are, they are very uh, advanced, they, they are in the permitting process and, and they have been funded by national funds and European funds, like Innovation Fund, uh, and they are uh, forcing to uh, enter in, opera, in, in operation in, 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 in three years, more or less, in 2026. And the other one, the GH2 Soto, uh, please repeat, yeah, okay, uh, they, they are proposing is, is uh, a smaller, it's a, a smaller project. They are proposing uh, to install a, a small electrolyzer, 5 megawatts, uh, that will be also connected to the grid and to a, a solar uh, panel uh, plant. And, and they are uh, proposing to use this green uh, hiring for the semen industry also and for transport, uh, for, for buses mainly. Uh, they are also in the permitting process and they have been funded by uh, the, for uh, some uh, national, uh, some national funds. Uh, both projects they have a second stage, more ambitious, 
uh, and in both cases they are proposing uh, the production of uh, ammonia for for exporting. But uh, uh, they they are but, uh, at this point is not so advanced. And that's all for my for my side. Eh? Thank you. Thank you so much, Indonesia, for this yeah. presentation. Yeah. No, 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 Also, because uh, we still have time for questions, and even if we don't manage to cover all the questions now, the beauty of being here in presence is that you can ask all the questions that you want, bother them during the lunch, uh, the afternoon. So we are here for uh, uh, also for this. Uh, okay, so do we have any questions from the audience at this moment? Uh, I, it's also like we are uh, approaching the lunch time, we are also tired, so I don't know if there are any questions at all from the audience. Uh, if not, then we can also ask participants if anyone would like to ask some questions. I think, uh, Melissa, there was some also discussions in the chat. Uh, yes, indeed. So no, no formal question, but we've had some comments from uh, participants, from Alexis and Karen, about uh, Elena funding for uh, for hydrogen. Um, the so the Elena facility from the the European Investment Bank has been mentioned. Uh, Alexis says uh, it's it's a bit broader than, for instance. Uh, the uh, Investeu Advisory Hub, but it's not really applicable to hydrogen projects at the moment, and it would be good uh, if it was extended in the future. So I don't know if um, any of the speakers or participants want to react to this. Probably that's very technical. Probably that's very uh, technical for Elena. So I'm not sure whether uh, we have uh, someone being able to comment on this. Well, if not, then I would say that uh, I thank you everyone for uh, also for joining online here today. We will close the first session of the workshop. We will have time to network in person here uh, around uh, uh, with, uh, with the food in front of us and also probably tasting some beers afterwards. Uh, thank you so much for being here and uh, uh, we can close also the, the call for the online participants and then we can continue the second part. So thank you, a uh, big round of applause for, for this part.